Hi everyone, it's Tracy Matthews of Flourish and Thrive Academy and I'm here today with Jenna Herbert of Make It University. Jenna is a craft maven and just an awesome all-around lady, so I wanted to have her on today to talk about craft shows and getting ready for the holidays. Mm -hmm. Hi Jenna. Hi. Thanks so much for being here with us. Oh, my pleasure. So, um, Let's just get started. Do you want to tell us a little bit about Make It University first? Sure. Okay, let's well, do that. Make It University came from the Make It Show, which I produced with my brother Chandler. So we have four shows a year in Vancouver and Edmonton, so Western Canada, and the show's just grown like crazy. And I deal with hundreds of creative artisans and designers and crafters, and a lot of them have amazing product, but they really struggle with the business side of things. So yeah. I was doing different seminars and workshops and coaching, and I thought, well, there has to be an easier way to do this. Yeah. So the university is all online. You can just download the courses, do them anywhere you want, and Perfect. it's just a for creative entrepreneurs to really access the business information that will help them take their business to the next level. I love it. We're so simpatico. It's perfect. Yes, I know. <laughs> okay, so we're here to talk about craft shows and getting ready for the holiday. So yeah. um, I guess I just wanted to start it. Like, what's your biggest piece of advice for um, newbie designers or people who are just starting out on the craft show circuit to kind of kill it in their sales at the craft show and also to prepare, just to prepare mm -hmm. to do it? Well, I know it's really overwhelming, especially around this time of year in September, thinking about mm -hmm. all the shows looming ahead, mostly in November. But I think you just really want to get organized and just structure it all out. So write out everything you need to do. Yeah. Sometimes just getting that list on paper and outside of your brain is a relief in itself. And from there, take all those tasks that you want to accomplish and start to put them in a calendar because that way you won't be so overwhelmed. Because I know for right. me, I get these laundry lists of things yeah. I need to do and I end up just in paralysis and not be able to really do anything. So as long as you have just a couple objectives every day, it's amazing how you can really motor through like a huge list. And also just have everything very visible. And what I mean by that is take all your shows and put them into a spreadsheet. And if you've done these shows before, have what your sales were last year and how much product you sold. Because the question I always get asked as a show organizer is, how much do I need to bring? Yeah. How much do I need to sell? And it's a very difficult question for me to answer. But if you're a little bit organized and a little bit savvy yourself it's something that you can actually figure out quite accurately I mean that's not to say you're always gonna have it bang on yeah but it's to have at least an idea because you don't want to have too much product because that's just wasted inventory but the worst thing is to have too little because you're yeah. just leaving on the table um, so just to get really organized I love clear plastic boxes with the list of contents on the side not to say I always did that in the past, but now <laughs> I do so many designers. The ones that I see do that, I'm like, that was smart. I wish I would have thought of that because uh, sometimes it takes a little effort and a little planning to get really organized initially, but it saves you so much stress later on. So it really I, does. I really recommend taking the time now while it's still fairly early in the season yeah. and just get yourself as organized as you possibly can. Yeah, and from everything, like pens, staplers, um, yeah. things to write little receipts on like have that all stocked away so you're not thinking about it like the second you yeah. walk into the show I would do that so many times and just like be running out to like the to staples or something to pick up stuff because I forgot to bring it or whatever and it's just that gets to be like by the time yeah, yeah. Back, okay now I'm ready to start I know but you're all messed up that way because you know, and if you're not giving yourself enough time to set up properly, too, because yeah. it annoys me so much when we get people kind of sneaking in a half an hour before the show, and they're just starting to set up, yeah. and it's really starting your your day on the wrong foot, and I think customers can tell if you've just set up in a hurry. Yeah, and then you're all frazzled, and no one wants that frazzled energy, <laughs> right? <laughs> it's not nice. So we talked a little bit about product assortment, and um, I know it's hard to estimate like exactly how much you want to bring, but as far as like an assortment of product goes, like what do you usually recommend to people like as far as price points go? I mean, maybe not specific price points, but like yeah. the range of product maybe is a better way to put it. Well, you really want to think in terms of who are the customers that are going to come through the show right. are. Are they younger? Are they older? 
Is it in an affluent neighborhood? Is it in a more trendy, maybe not so affluent area? (laughs) So you want to think in terms of the customers and not to say you only bring those products because there's always a certain amount of overlap. But I think just being really clear of who's going to come, who they're going to be buying for. And I think a nice price point is probably what you spend on your own family and right. friends. So if that's like 50 bucks, if it's 100 bucks, I mean, generally people don't spend more than $100 on gifts. Yeah. You know, say they never will, but um, you want to think in terms of who they're going to be shopping for. Right. And what are these customers going to be looking for? Are they going to want something a little bit more contemporary? Are they going to want something a little bit higher end? And I know for jewelry designers, especially if you're dealing with really fine gems and yeah. gold, you probably don't want to always run the risk of bringing your stuff that's like thousands of dollars right. because you never know with all those hundreds and you know thousands of people walking through the show. You just you know, you want to be smart and strategic about it. Right. So it's good to bring like the more giftier price point things that, and you can bring a few statement pieces just in case someone comes by, but maybe not the whole, the whole case of the statement, you know, dripping in diamond stuff (laughs) or whatever. Not that you would bring diamonds to a craft show, but you know, you never know. (laughs) But that's not to say you couldn't have a beautiful catalog. Right. That does have even pictures of your statement pieces or have like a little iPad set up that rotates different photographs. Like that's another way because you never know if there's going to be store buyers coming through. Right. So you always want to be prepared. But I think the majority of what you bring, you know, it's the holidays. Like people are going to be buying for themselves. But for the most part, I gifts, think 80% yeah. would be for gifts. So true. It's so true. Um, so you've clearly seen a lot of. Um, craft shows slash trade shows or any kind of shows where people are in front of the audience. You know, I get this question asked a lot. um, How do you staff your booth? So I'm curious, like, I know that you, before you were like running the production of a show, you had your own line. So I'm curious as to what you did and what you found the most success with. Mm -hmm. It was always a challenge because I always found there was no one that could sell like me. And Initially, the obvious thing to do is to enlist your friends, but I soon found out a lot of my girlfriends just wanted to chat and shop, and they were <laughs> workers, and you know, I love them, but I, I did not want them near my booth, because yeah. it was a distraction, and you know, when you're at a show all set up, it's a major investment. You put a lot of money to be there and a lot of time and energy, yeah. so it has to go time for you. And you know, if you do have friends who are naturally gifted at sales who can handle it, that's fine. But I think you know, interns can be a, a right. good source of cheap labor. Um, <laughs> I Craigslist. I, another thing you can do is walk around other shows, and if there's someone who looks like they're amazing at selling maybe you could split that individual with the designer. So if they have found someone, um, I remember one time doing a show in Toronto, I live in Vancouver, so you know, I, I took a girl with me to Toronto and I didn't really need her to help me the whole time, so yeah. I kind of picked her out to other designers. You're like, does anyone else need to go to the bathroom like for an hour <laughs> or go grab lunch or need a break, you know? It worked out really well because I felt like the show was 11 hours each day and I felt yeah. like, to pay her 11 hours each day was so much money. So, you know, I think there's other people like that too that have a help or that maybe you could enlist. And yeah. at least that way they kind of know the biz and they know how to use like the little terminals and they right. know how to, you know, they know how to sell. So that can be a good resource too. But I mean, no one sells like you do. So if it's you true. can the majority of the time and a lot of times at craft shows, everyone is there for the same reason. And if you need to get your neighbor to watch your booth for a little while while you go to the bathroom, you can do the same thing for them. So that's another way to get someone just to look over your booth. Right. What comes around goes around. All about helping out, right? (laughs) So um, now I know that there are certain like little tricks that you'd probably advise people who are just starting out. So what are your, some of your, keys to success for um, actually really having a great show? Mm -hmm. Well, in terms of selling, I think it's all about just engaging customers. And I would recommend not going full on sales right away. I think it's almost like like fishing. You cast your line, you're 
them in a little bit, you know, ask them how they're enjoying the show, ask them if they've been before, and if they have, you know, who are some of their favorite designers? Like, yeah. just chat them up and get that natural rapport going. And then you want to launch in with talking about different features of your product, maybe the process of how it's made, um, maybe a little bit about your own personal story. But I think when you go hardcore into sales, I know for myself, it's kind of a turnoff. Totally, yeah. So, you know, sell how you like to be sold to. Right. And just keep that in mind. That's really great advice. Also, I just thought of this as we're talking. It's like, one thing that is like a brilliant way to like approach anyone is to give them a compliment. Like, yeah. oh my God, I love your shirt. I mean, if there's five people in the booth like looking at your stuff, maybe don't say the same thing to everyone because then they'll <laughs> catch on. But, <laughs> but flattery is the best way to kind of draw someone in because it helps engage them and want to talk to you about whatever it is like, oh, thank you so much. You know, I've had this for years or, you know, I just got it. You know, people, whatever it is, you know what I mean? Like. Yeah. Tell them they're pretty. Everyone likes to be told they're pretty. So. Yeah. And wouldn't you look nice with this necklace on? I know. <laughs> These earrings would really um, make you look make even you look more beautiful. <laughs> but you're so right about that. People just like a compliment and even yeah. complimenting their style. And, and yeah. then maybe later on you can say, well, you know, I can tell by how you're dressed or by your coat, like something like this would look like really fit in yeah. nicely with your wardrobe. Right. So just clever little ways that you can kind of get in. I think also asking who they're shopping for, who they have left to buy for, because oftentimes customers at craft shows, especially on the holiday season, yeah. they're there for a reason. They're there yeah. to get their shopping done. And if you can help them, especially if it's a dude and you're selling girl stuff, like yeah. they your help. Fast. Like, they have no idea. <laughs> get them in and out fast. That that's all they want is like a few suggestions, yeah. like make the decision for them in and out. <laughs> right? Yeah. Exactly. The easy exactly. I think I think with anything, like the easier you can make it for someone to to buy from you is Absolutely. like the best answer, right? Absolutely. Ease and fun. Like make yeah. sure they good time because if you look like you're having a great time and you really are happy to be there and are really enthusiastic they're going to naturally be drawn to you and feel the same way it's like the same reason we love shopping after getting our hair done yeah if it's style like yeah. if it's a good cut if it's not so good a cut you just want to go home and cry but <laughs> uh, you know if you get a fabulous new haircut I know for myself the first thing I want to do is go shopping yeah. so it's the same idea with craft shows you want to leave people feeling really good and energized because they're just going to buy more yeah so I know you have a collection um of belts if I remember correctly right booty belts booty yes. belts I love it I love the name um <laughs> So what was kind of like when you had that line, because I know you started it years and years ago, and um, what was sort of like your key, key to success when you were at shows and like what kept you going? Um, and I know there was like some longevity with it because you had it for a while, right? Is that, is yeah. that am I remembering correctly? Lots yeah, lots and lots of caffeine. <laughs> yeah. I just, I was so passionate. I really was. Like it yeah. was everything and uh, I, I just loved what I was doing so much and I think that just radiated from me and because I looked like I was having the time of my life other people thought well why is this girl having so much fun over there and it was naturally drawn to me and I'd get everyone to try on my booty belts and have Yay. a big meter and I, I would just have fun with them and I think the more you can have fun yourself and smile and laugh and giggle the more other people are going to feel like it's okay for them to do that too and it makes a day go by so much faster right. and uh, yeah, just looking like you want to be there. I know it sounds really simple, but it's amazing what the difference it makes. I know. Because you know, we've all seen the designer on their iPhone. They just don't give a crap. And, you know, it looks like they're being tortured by being in their booth. And no one wants to buy from them, even if they have no. a fabulous product. And a lot of them do, which is crazy. You I think, know. Like, you have such amazing stuff. Why are you so sad and bitter? <laughs> but, you know, it's this vicious cycle, and as soon as you start putting out that energy, you just naturally repel customers, and no one wants to do that. So. Yeah, and no one can sell anything as good as the designer. It's like, um, you can't, no one can sell your product as good as you can. But I think a lot of uh, creative entrepreneurs, they just, they feel like they suck at sales, and they're like, well, I'm just not good at it. But I yeah. think maybe their approach, because 
yeah, there's a douchey salesperson that none right. of us want to be like, but you can sell in a really genuine, authentic way that is yeah. fun and it's easy. It doesn't have to be really complicated and hard. It's so true. It's so true. Yeah. It can be, it can be really fun. And you know, I just, I just love what you said about attitude and you know, trying to keep your energy up because I really think that is the key to success for anyone in any business. And when you, um, you know, and I, I think there's this other little trick. I remember this from trade shows because, you know, I did a lot of trade shows in my history, not as many craft shows, but they're basically the same thing. You're in front of an audience sitting in a booth trying yeah. to sell your product. doesn't matter if it's wholesale or um, direct to consumer, whatever. Yeah, exactly. um, it's like sometimes the shows weren't that that good, but like you hear people telling customers that their show sucks. I'm like, oh, even if I wasn't nice. having a great show, I would be like, oh my God, it's the best show ever because you yeah. don't want to pass that energy around. And plus you also, you know, you start to create momentum in your business from your attitude and what you put forth. And it's not necessarily um, like being untruthful, but when it... Saying that you're doing well and acting as if and sort of playing the part starts to attract yeah. that to you. And so, I don't know, when you said that, it just really resonated with me and my yeah. experience, I guess, when I used to have to do that. <laughs> yeah, because the days are long and it can be challenging. But I think if you remind yourself why you're doing this to right. begin and realize how lucky you are not to have a nine to five that you So hate, true. You're ultimately living the dream even though it might not be exactly where you want to end up, it doesn't matter. You're all you're in the process of, and just remind yourself, like you're your own boss, and how amazing and how envious you know ninety nine percent of people are because you get to do what you love. And even if a show is slow, because we've all experienced yeah. that. Oh my God, why did I ever do this? But you still never know who's going to walk on by, right. and it could be you know a buyer for Macy's or Bloomingdale's. Like you just have no idea, or it could be you know a writer for some big magazine. It's and true. In a booth, um, someone said this recently, and I thought it was so smart. It's almost like having like a big business card, or it is like a virtual website that people can come in and interact with you. And if you think in terms of that. It really, or even advertisement, it's like a yeah. virtual advertisement. And when you think about like a magazine, you get a tiny, tiny, tiny little, yeah. you know, one by one yeah. inch ad. But here you have this big interactive booth and sales don't maybe matter as much as you initially thought. Right. That's so true. Because I can remember back to a show maybe where like an editor from a big magazine came by and out of that show, you know, maybe... The, what I walked away from the show from in the moment wasn't maybe the sales that I'd wanted. You know, yeah. all these other opportunities came later. I know that it took me almost like a year to land one of my best clients that I had for years in my business, the Sundance catalog. And they would come to my booth show after show after show. And finally, like, there was some product assortment that hit. And then I remember one season they ordered like 10 styles, like serious yeah. deep numbers. And I was like, wow, like this is insane yeah. because like for like to get, um, to get those things, like you, you just don't know. It's like sort of staying the course, knowing that you're on the right path, being mm, positive yeah. and complimenting people and not sitting down <laughs> and being negative. Right. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. All of absolutely. It. Because I think, um, just to add on what you're saying, you just don't know. And I think what happens a lot of times is designers, they quit too soon and they get yeah. just too soon and you know even if you have shows where you don't even break even for the first year think about who you're meeting think about store yeah. buyers think about all these other things because like you said it took how many times for them to come to your booth before they bought yeah and uh yeah when you have that attitude and you just don't give up it's amazing but with that said if certain things just aren't working you have to evaluate that right too. sometimes it can come down to display and you just have your stuff displayed in a way that doesn't make sense to other people, even though you think they know what your selling is. Yeah. That may not be the case. So getting an outside objective opinion can be helpful with that. That is great, great advice, my friend. Thank you so much. I just want to thank you again for being here. It's been so great to chat with you just for the few minutes that we had here. Um, 
as always, brilliant advice. If you want to um, learn more about Jenna, go check her out on makeituniversity.com. She has some really great products there that are... Wait, tell me about your product for holiday sales. <laughs> cha ching bells. cha <laughs> bells. Rock your holiday sales. I so love it. You need to know to really have an amazing season. And yeah, a lot of stuff we talked about today. Getting prepared during the show and then what you can do after the follow-up. Brilliant, brilliant. Um, I'll have all the information uh, below this video, so go ahead and check it out. And then also, if you liked what you saw, go ahead and leave a comment below. If you have any more questions about craft shows or trade shows, please leave it in the comments below. Um, you just never know when we'll be talking again, hopefully really soon. And um, yeah, share this with your friends on Facebook and Twitter. Thank you so much, Jenna, and I'll be talking to you soon, my friend. Okay, bye, Tracy. Bye, hon. Yeah. <laughs>